Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Um, yeah, where we left off yesterday, we were just coming up through there. Um, it's actually the following morning now, and I have gone, I've cleaned up the cows, um, all, all the feed area. Um, they've got food to keep them going for now, but um, the grass, we don't have very much grass. Um, water, we will need topping up, and silage and hay, now, and power food and so on, it takes a third of a season to, um, we've got updates going on there. Um, it takes a third of a season in order for the silage to make. So we've got bales of silage that we've made that aren't going to be ready for a little while. We also could do with getting some fresh grass in for the cows. So we might have to think of a way to quickly and easily gather up grass for them um, so that we can keep them uh, nicely topped up. Then we're also going to want to think of... Um, well, what are we going to do about silage? Um, I think what we're going to end up having to do, because it's a third of a season, we well, we might we might get away with the bales of silage that we made. They they may be ready in time, but uh, there's there's sort of no guarantees on that one. And if we come up here, which way do we want to go? The sawmill. I think that's the sawmill over there. If we take a look at the map a minute. Um, the sawmill is completely in the other direction completely in the other direction so completely gone the wrong way i was, I was loving this track by the way it's, it, it it does look very cool that's the sawmill there we got completely the wrong way we came along the road and then we came off the track just there below field 50 so where's the road that goes into here is, is, is there a road is that a track that runs along there i know there's a track there that comes out of the forest and goes into it and there that's that's a railway, that is. So how are we going to get there? Okay, so we got we got to turn around. If we go up that track there, this is great. We're going we're gonna to wander around the valley, hopelessly lost for a little while. This field here, I think this field would be awesome to buy. Um, but yeah, it does look like some of our grass is going to have to be used for keeping fresh grass in for the cattle. And... That's that's fine and all. I've got no problem with doing that. But I'm also thinking that if we have a sort of a look around. There's the sawmill. I'm looking at the sawmill. It's right there. How do I get in there? I can't go. D I, I don't want to drive across someone else's fields. I feel that that's kind of... It feels cheaty to me driving across someone else's field. So I do want to find the way to get in there. But at the same time, all of this is going in completely the wrong direction. Okay, we'll turn around here. There's a, there's a patch here that we can turn around on. Um... That goes away into the woods there, which seems to be going the wrong direction as well. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's a railway track that goes along the outside. So, do we go down here? Okay, let's go down here. We're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to go down here. I know you all want to see where this track goes. I certainly do. Um, come on down here. you got to go slow. It's a good job we got this load strapped on. It's a long trailer to be going along a little track like this. It's, it is. It's going completely the wrong direction. It's going down to a pond down the bottom. And I don't know if it goes any further than that. I'm right off the track because I'm looking away. Um, no, it does keep going, but it's, it's going the wrong way. I don't want to go this way. I need to get to the sawmill. Oh, this is bad. This is, this is not a good This is not a good start to the day, is it? This is really not a good start to the day. Getting hopelessly lost in the woods. Um... We'll come up this end, and I think we're going to have to turn around and go the other way. So, we'll go back, which means we have to get back to the main road, and then after we've got to the main road... Ooh! There's a lot of wildlife going on in the woods here. And uh, we come up here. Yeah, that is... I'm sure there's railway that goes up the top there. We come out this way, so we can go on round the edge. We're just, basically, we're just going to meet up back with the track that we were on. And then we can carry on back to the way that we want to go. It's a good job this track isn't too rough. We can at least get a little bit of a turn of speed on here. There's a bit of mud just there. I don't know if that's actually good, if that would go muddy during the rain. It's going to rain later today. Um, we'll worry about that later. So we've only got a few days of spring left. It's uh, just the beginning of late spring now. Um, the, all the crops have had one growth stage come upon them. So we're also going to need to get... Um, fertilizer being spread now i think with the seasons mob the first stage of a crop growth 
doesn't get damaged when you drive on it to simulate real life because it doesn't really knock it back if you just when it's first emerging from the ground you can still drive over the crop with big wheels it doesn't damage it so we need to go and get another round of fertilizer on our field because we've only got two rounds at the moment if we take a look at the map um through here uh no this one fertilized we're on the medium blue we don't have um the full oh actually no is that the dark blue we have got three foot stages on. When did we do that? Did we do it with... You know, I genuinely... I thought that we'd only gotten two stages. We'll, we'll have a look. I, I'm sure that we only had two stages of fertilizer on. We'll, we'll, take a bit, we'll take a peek later and see how that's going. So, this one... Let me get back down to the bottom of the track now that you've already seen all of this. Um, and we'll see if we can find the correct way into the sawmill. I can already see the correct way into the sawmill. We just needed to go across the railway and straight along the road that goes right in the front door. I can't believe I missed that. Seriously, I wandered around there for a bit um, before yesterday's episode just to sort of familiarise myself with it so I didn't make any stupid mistakes, um, which I didn't really want to make. And so then I came along and I made the stupid mistake. Anyway, so here we go. Straight in the front door of the sawmill. We can get right in here. And now the big question is, do we need the um, crane arm on the back of the Deutz or can we just come through here? So, yeah, I knew there was a track coming in. It comes from that section of woodland down there. Um, we will do a bit of forestry down there. But we'll do that in the winter. It'd be quite cool to do that with... Um, uh, rather than doing it in the summer now, you, are, you actually do more of your timber and um, stuff like that on a farm in the winter. It's, it's just something that you would do. So there is where we sell our logs. And... Is there anywhere else to sell logs? No, we just put them there. I've got a feeling that we're going to need to um, manually take them off of the trailer, which is going to be a little bit of a nuisance. So let's get these straps off. And that one there, there, and there. Right. So if I just drive the trailer over, is that going to be enough? Or is it a low? Oh, no, it's... Ah, excellent. Okay, I know that that is going against the whole realism vein, but... Um, it just makes it a lot easier. It's, it's a whole lot easier because, quite frankly, if you were to go to a sawmill like this delivering timber, they would unload for you. You wouldn't have to bring your own machine in order to unload your own trailer. It just wouldn't happen. That's just, that is not realistic at all. Um, they, These people would unload. They would have a great big crane there, probably one of the forklifts, actually. Um, if yeah, it'd be a forklift and it would have like a grab on the front of it and it would just come along, it would grab most of it, it would do it in about two loads. It would, um, it, they got big specialist equipment for doing that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, you certainly wouldn't have to worry about it yourself. We got 766 and 534 euros for the two big ones. And I completely forgot my weekly question. Completely forgot. So yeah, I'm picking two tractors. Okay, so you've got five options. You can have the Valtra Valmet 602. You can have. Uh, let me just come back through, and ooh, it's all the way up here, isn't it? Um, yet yeah, there it is. The Universal 445 DTC. You can have the Massey Ferguson Series 200C, the one with the crawler tracks on it. What happened there? Um. The International Harvest 744, International Harvester, I should say, or the Fiat 400 series. Um, these are all below 100 horsepower. Uh, I would like to use some small tractors when we come to do our haymaking. Um, and I will pick the top two on the vote this time. It's not just going to be the most popular one, it's going to be the top two. Two. So it's your vote, it's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. So we're going to get back to the yard. The first thing we're going to do is get a tractor on and. Well, no, I need to get the Zeta down to the shop with the front loader on so that I can get a grab so that we can load the rest of the logs a bit easier rather than having to use the crane arm. Uh, then we're going to nip over to the um, uh, nip back to the farm and get a fertilizer spinner on one of the tractors and just see if we need to put more fertilizer on the fields. I think we do. I do think we do. I've got a, um, but yeah. Oh no. Yes, actually, I can go this way. I can go along this track along the back. Um, 
and then uh, we've, we've also got logs to load up and stuff like that. So I will get back to the yard and I will get the new grab for the Zeta and so that we can get these logs being loaded and we can also see if we need to do fertilizer. I was going way too fast then. I am aware of that. I, I knew it as I could see myself bouncing along. This track's a bit rougher so we would actually be going about this speed and I don't actually need the flashing beacons on here either and I've gotten hopelessly lost just driven on someone's field which again I don't like shouldn't have done that and oh I've been driving <laughs> it's our fields that I've been driving along yeah I'm still getting used to this map I'm still getting used to the way that it's all laid out but it's actually our own track coming up the back of our own track that um that I was doing and and there's our yard <laughs> that's brilliant right I will get uh, everything sorted out and then we can get these logs loaded up I'm going to be using the muck grab and now how do I get this one loaded on attach type front loader close door why isn't it allowing uh, is that too big is that what the problem is because if I do that it's just giving me the error message like that uh, but if I come out ready to do the whole attaching thing I can enter attach a type front loader but it's not letting me pick it up do I need a bigger a, a bigger thing for that and yes by the way I did buy it from the shop and I reset it back to here because it was supposed to be behind the scenes so that uh, you can see it because it's a lot quicker like that and we don't need to have realism when um, I'm not actually filming um, so yeah that's why it's over here but now I can't actually attach the thing why won't it let me attach I got it because it's attached to type is the front loader and if I bring that one up there I got a feeling that maybe this one needs to go on the attack oh now it's working maybe oh it's, it might have just been because I was too high or too low or something like that just in the wrong position I'm not sure but anyway it should now work let's just there we go helper E has completed their task oh I know what it's doing I've got um, there's a button on my joystick that I use for opening and closing the grab is also trying to um, make the fertilizer go with hired help which is a very weird thing to want to do um, so what I will do is I will leave that one there I was hoping to use that as the the back weight um, because it's going to need, I'm going to need a, a weight on the rear of this one. And I was thinking that that would actually work out really well as an, an excellent back weight, right? It won't do it now that I don't have an implement on the back. So what we're going to need to do is I'm going to need to get a weight on the back of this one. It's going to have to be the barrel weight on here. I'll probably use the crane arm to load two logs onto that trailer. And then the rest of the branches we we'll use um, the the Zeta. So if I come back over here... Oh, and I did just do a very brief test. We do need to fertilize the fields, but because I've done so much fertilizing with you already, I'll do that um, behind scenes, I expect, uh, sometime soon, because it really doesn't take long to do the fertilizer spreading. So if I can just... Can I pick that one up? No. Nope. If I let go of that one... If he will let go... Release! Relinquish your hold. And put that down there. Hopefully that's a bit better balanced. <laughs> if I do it like that. What I want to do is I just want to carry this log all the way over to the trailer and then place it on the trailer. So I need to bring it right in close to the tractor. Like that. This is realistic. I have seen this sort of thing done. You'd be amazed at what some farmers will do. When they're, trying to, when they're trying to get a job done quickly, you would be amazed at what happens on some farms. So let's just move that one out like that and pick it up like this. Um, yeah, if the hydraulics will do it, you can do it. Um, you know, it says weight limit uh, 200 kilos on something. Most places that I've worked on, they just kind of take that as a guideline or even a challenge and say, right, well, it says 200 kilos. I reckon we ought to be able to pick up a one ton dumpy bag with that. No trouble at all. So then you just kind of you, you go for it. You pick up your one ton dumpy bag um, and it really struggles and strains with everything there. But it still does it. It still does it. And you, you can't help but 
get you have this uh, immense feeling of pride that you were able to do it even though it said that it couldn't do it um that's kind of yeah that's that's kind of um what happens on a lot of places and so yeah i'm i'm not in the least bit concerned that i'm being unrealistic here by um moving around with the logs like that um remember I know that we're sort of doing this on a larger scale, but we, we are, we're, we're trying to sort of simulate big scale management at the same time as running a small farm. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to, basically I'm trying to do two things at once with this. So I'm, I'm trying to show you a flavour of uh, both of them at the same time, if I can. Right. We are struggling to pick this one up. Um, what would happen here in real life is it would carry on. You'd, you'd be just fine. Um, I'm going to speed up time now until the rain stops. Um, yeah, see, it's it's really struggling to, to just grab that log. I think what we need to do is we need to actually get a little bit close to the trailer. So let's just move around. Yeah, what you do is you would you'd get hold of it. You'd put the grab around the log so that it was held in place. Um, and if you thought the grab was struggling to hold the log, uh, you'd get chains. You'd get some chains and you'd wrap those around as well so that they make sure... So you're absolutely certain that the log is being held onto, and then you'd lift it up. Um, and yeah, you, you obviously you would make sure that nobody got anywhere near near to it. But um, yeah, so we'd put that on like that, and then you'd have a couple of chains and you'd wrap around it as well, and then you'd pick the log up and away you'd go. But we can't do that. So what we're gonna do is destroy everything. I was so hoping that was gonna work. I was thinking to put it onto the drawbar, um, the drawbar end of the trailer, because the extra weight would be good for the other tractor. Um, it would sort of help it grip and help keep the load, but we won't worry about that now because, um, well, we will just put it onto the, over the wheels. Right. We can slow time down a little bit. I like being able to control time like this. Let's see if I can... Get, I want to get this one on while I'm filming it because I've already started and, you know, challenge has been been made. And this one does seem to be struggling a lot more than the other ones that we did. So there we go. It's up and... No, that's not going to... I went the wrong way. That doesn't help, does it? Let me bring it around this way. I might be able to see it a little bit better. It's so close. It's. I know that it can be done. It can definitely be done because we've a, we've been able to pick this log up, so it can definitely be done. But the issue is, we can't. It's it's difficult. We did it! Yes. Okay, that's close enough. That's close enough. It's on there. It's on the trailer. It's not perfect. It could probably be nudged over a bit, but it's on there. Right. I'm going to pause a minute and. Um, well, not pause. I'm going to get the rest of the... Um, bring that one round. I get that other log on and get a few things sort of uh, gathered up in position. And we can get the rest of these logs loaded and then get them up to the sawmill. Because we should get more money for these in um, with the longer logs like this. we just got to get this one. This one's going to be a lot lighter. So I'll get this loaded up. I'll get the others ready. We also need to pick up all of these wood chips and we want to sell those as well. Although we might just stockpile those for now and um, sell them later on and get more wood chips as well. I was thinking of doing that. Oh, that is fantastic. Okay. This is something that I have done before. I have definitely done this. You have massive load on the back of the tractor where the front wheels are barely touching the ground. And... When I say that occasionally farmers will do things that really absolutely push the complete limits of what their machines can do, I mean it. We do. We, we really do. Um, and yes, it's not always the best way to treat your machines, um, but sometimes you need a job done and you've got what machines... You've got m machines available to do a job. Um, they're not perfectly suited to the job, but they're all you've got to hand. And the cost of getting another machine is far more expensive than just trying to trying to get the job done with the tools that you've got. That's three quarters of farming, I would say, is getting getting a job done with what you've got to hand. If you can't do it with what you've got to hand, 
then you um, you you try something else. But and that's that's the kind of the, the, the big but of it all is um, for a far most farmers that I've ever met, um, certainly in my part of the world, in order for them to s just sit down and say, you know what, it cannot be done like this or with this, it takes quite a bit. It's 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 a um, a massive thing that they've got to do in. It, yeah, you, you really struggle. You, you you will try everything you possibly can in order to make sure that it um, it does work. So if it doesn't work, um, I was actually going to pause and do that behind the scenes, but then the tractor started getting really light on the front wheels, and I just thought that was epically cool and had to show you. So there you go. Um, yeah, it's... Farmers will just get... They, they will do everything they can to make sure that the job does get done right. Um... But yeah, if you've only if you've got a small tractor and a small uh, crane arm or something, and you need to pick up something heavy, you're not going to go and buy a brand new machine in order to do the lift. And you're not going to go to your neighbour and you say, "Can you please come round and um, do this lift for me?" Because both of those options can be expensive. They both take a lot of time and money, and they're difficult. So you know, it's 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 not always easy to arrange uh, for things like that to happen. So you you get on, you, you just get on and you do the job with what you've got to hand. And this muck grab, I think, is going to work beautifully well for doing this job. It, the logs do slide out a little bit to the side, but that's okay, we can live with that. So I can dump that down there like that. I've got two more logs here, we'll, get, we'll grab those. But yeah, that, that picked it up just then really, really well. I was, I was actually genuinely surprised because... I have nothing but headaches trying to pick up these logs with, um, well, all, all of the machine implements that the game has because the the spikes don't go into the ground and because and they're like um, quite solidly set as well. You've got no sort of option. Um, if I can just get that onto the forks a little bit more. I might if I if I bring it right over like that, that might do it. There we go. Excellent. And that's picked them both up. Um, yeah, so it tends to just push logs along the ground and it doesn't pick them up very well. That's uh, so one thing that has always irritated me about this game is the fact that it does that. It's so difficult to um, pick any logs up properly um, because of the fact that it, it sits right on top of the ground rather than just... All you want is for like the, the spikes or the, uh, the bale spikes or... Um, the, the forks and stuff to just dig into the ground ever so slightly so that you can um, pick stuff up and, and it would just sort of dip just down underneath the objects just a fraction you can pick things up and then you've got no problems whatsoever so uh, we need to line this up you know I'm gonna just jump off a second and I'm gonna put a strap over here because otherwise we're gonna regret that because getting those back on again is going to be incredibly difficult it's going to be difficult enough trying to get these logs to stay on this trailer anyway because of their um, curved shape and this is a bale trailer not a log trailer so it doesn't have any assistance on the sides Ooh, we've done that jump out here I was actually talking about starting some fertilizer spreading today and I have done none um, should I let's just get this tractor here Start you up. If I turn round and leave this log grab here for now, we won't worry about returning it now. I don't need a front weight on this. I can put that one there. If I bring the arm out like that, that should help support it when I unhitch it. Because when I unhitched it before, it was um, up in the air. It does like that. And then it will just need to balance. So let's come back over here. We'll get that fertilizer spreader on and I'll just set it going in one of the fields just so that we have at least started doing the fertilizer spreading. The ground has still got to warm up by another three degrees, which is... Actually, it might be. We may even get to planting before the end of spring because um, if you look at the predicted temperatures during the day for the next few days, it's, it's not too bad. We've got 14, 18, 18... Night time it does cool down a bit, but it doesn't cool down enough to worry about, um... What am I doing? I want to do that, and then I want to press Z, don't I? There we go. It doesn't cool down enough during the night that it's going to cause any issues. So 
So let's bring this one over here. Now, in theory, we should be able to drive on this crop without damaging it on the first stage. Yes. And that's how it should be. Um, if you drive on it on the second stage, it destroys the crop. Same with the grass. But on the first stage, it's all tickety-boo. Everything is just fine. So we'll let that one carry on there. He's going to go on. He'll probably... He might even start on the next bit. We want to um, flick through. And this bit is still following the realism just because of the way that we run this map. Already spoke to you about that, didn't I? Um, I was thinking we could use the vitamin to gather up the wood chips and just stick them in a heap somewhere. I'm not quite sure yet. We might get... We might... Actually, we got a bucket for this one. We might just use this one to do it. Let's bring that down. Now, this is going to be a bit more tricky. I don't think we'll get all of these in one go, but we can try. If I do it like that, right over like that, and then close. All but one. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, let's bring those round. And using the muck grab in order to pick up logs... I would consider this to be extremely realistic because I have done this myself several times. Um, I've never worked on a farm that has had an actual log grab for their um, machine. It's always been done with a muck grab or something similar anyway. Um, whether you use a muck grab or you use something equally small. Um, but yeah, I've, I've never worked on a farm that has had a log grab and I've done plenty of uh, like forestry related stuff, you know, just trimming hedges and stuff like that. Um, done. I've done a huge amount of that. So I, I'm quite familiar with the processes. Now we've got one more over here and I'm thinking that rather than try and balance this one on the top, can I pick, oh, I can actually pick this one up as well. Okay. I was thinking that we would cut it in half, but we can, if we can pick it up manually, we'll do that. And if I bring this one over... <laughs> okay, uh, that didn't work quite as well as I hoped. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to cut the very end here of this one so that it drops down properly onto the load. And we'll undo the strap here. I might have to undo the strap at the other end as well just to have them sit down a little bit better in place there. That, that, that looks, that, that it does look like it's sitting a little bit better than it was. This log is going to be more difficult to get on here. I want to get this one up and not hanging over the edge of the trailer. Jump. Has it done it? That's close enough. That's close enough. Move that one. I can move it forward a little bit. There we go. Excellent. That one's in place. And that one... Okay, we're, we're making progress. We're making real, genuine progress here at last. It's taken a while, um, but yeah, we're, we're getting there. Ooh, and I've got my timer going off. Everything's happening all at once. Uh, that one there and that one there. Right. We've got our trailer. It's all loaded up. This one can stop. We'll worry about the wood chips later. Um, let's just put that down on the ground. There we go. And get you started up so we want to get this one over to the sawmill and then once we've sold these logs actually we'll go out this way rather than trying to go through the farm um we've just got to gather those wood chips up and put them somewhere i don't think we'll sell them yet i'm thinking that we'll try and get some more wood chips from somewhere and we'll sell the whole lot altogether. can i get round this corner without destroying too much crop just and yeah we'll um if we get some more wood chips together we could try selling some um, extras maybe get a uh, actually maybe we could get a couple of trailer loads of wood chips I think that could be quite a good thing to do but we want to get this lot over to the sawmill so if I get over there now I will do the fertilizer spreading between this episode and the next episode we've got um, actually once the fertilizer is done that's really it we're just gonna need to hang around and wait um, we do need to get a zero grazing system going on for the cows. Um, a few people said that the zero grazing, is, one of the main reasons you use zero grazing is so that you can have more cows than you would otherwise be able to have and um, support more animals than you would otherwise be able to support. 
uh, which I didn't mention last time. So, yeah, we do need a zero grazing system. We'll probably use one of the fields close to us. Because as soon as you get to summer, you start getting a decent growth rate coming up on all of the different things. Um, which would be quite handy. Now, which way did we come out of here? It wasn't there. Oh, is that road right there? We want to turn down here, don't we? Next to the railway. And run all the way down. And then we can go to the sawmill. So I will see you down at the sawmill in a minute. I tell you what, while we're driving down, my weekly question for this week is which tractor would you like me to buy? I won't show you the tractors now as you've already seen them at the beginning of the episode. There is a, uh, I've got to remember them now off the top of my head, there's a Fiat 4 or 500 series. Um, you've got these options in the options section. I'll just go probably for the bigger one if, if that's the one that wins the boat. Um, there is the International Harvester 744. There is the Massey Ferguson with the crawler tracks. There's a Universal... Is it Universal Tractor Factory? I think it's something like that. Um, uh, as a tractor from those... Uh, is it the DTC? I can't remember now. Um, gee, you know what? I better just check that one because um, it is an important one to... That they're all important. Yeah, Universal 445 DTC tractor. And then finally, there is the Valtra Valmet 602. A much older Valtra than... Um, we've used in any of our previous episodes. It's your vote. It's your game. Head in the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. I will be using the top two from that particular vote, uh, not just the most popular one. I will use the two most popular ones on that vote. Uh, I'll just undo that one. Now, is everything going to fall off while we move? Or is it going to stay on there just long enough to get up here? Those logs have already settled down a little bit. I don't want them to fall off. That's my main concern, is them falling off. There we go. Sold the lot. 200 euros per branch. That's actually not bad, considering the last lots of um, prices. We've definitely got more than double what we got for when we cut them in half. Um, and obviously it would be better if they were straighter. Um, the pine logs you get a lot more for. Um, 560, 801. I'm guessing that's the last two, the, the bigger ones. So you don't get a huge amount for those trees. Um, but it's not too bad. So I will go and I will get the fertilizer done. Um, in our next episode, our main concern is going to be getting grass for the cows. The silage should be done ready. It should be ready soon. So we should be okay for food for the cows. We're going to need to put a bit of water in for them fairly soon. Um, but it's grass that is kind of the main concern. So we might take a little look around the map and see if there are some like public areas that um, we could trim the grass on. So sort of here along the railway. Because I don't think this is unrealistic. A lot of farmers... Um, in my part of the country, you'd kind of get a contract if you were going to go and do something like that. But I know lots of different places in, even in this country, and certainly in a lot of different places in Europe, um, getting a contract to um, cut grass in some areas is what you do. But then other er other public areas, you just go and cut the grass. If you need the grass, you go and cut it for like common land and stuff like that. So we got there's some public areas there that we could just go and trim um, and keep them neat and tidy. But at the same time, is the grass actually growing there? Because it's growing in the field, but I don't know if it's growing off to the side here. I will investigate this most enthusiastically. That's our turn off right there. I've gone too far. Um, yeah, I will. I will investigate this because it would be pretty cool if we could like just run a, a front-mounted mower and a um, silage machine up and down. Silage machine, a forage wagon. Um, up and down like the road verges and stuff like that in order to keep our cows fed we're not going to have to use one of our fields because we want to use the fields for other things we want to use the fields for making bales and stuff like that so yeah i will have a look and i will see what sort of things that we can find to do that um or what areas we can find and we'll take a look at that tomorrow um a lot of people i wasn't getting a lot of love for this machine over here and some people said they liked it, but the overall opinion is there's a reason that these sorts of things are parked in the hedge and are no longer used. Um, so, yes, I would like to hear your opinions on this one. Do we keep using this one, or do we get a more modern 
um, forage wagon. Do you, do you want me to keep using this to do our zero grazing system for the cattle? Or do you want me to get a slightly more modern um, machine? Now, I've got one in mind. It's not on Mod Hub. Um, it was definitely around in FS15. If I can find it for FS17, that would be very, very cool. It's something that I have seen videos of being used quite a bit in uh, Switzerland. Um more than anywhere else it, it seems to be quite popular in in a, a swiss in the alps um but yeah so that is one thing that i will try and get if i can um but i, I want to hear what your views on that particular mod are do you like it or do you want me to get rid of it but anyway if you enjoyed this episode then please head down, down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome I am going to finish doing the fertilizer spreading and I'm also going to get a bucket on the front of this Zeta and I'm just going to gather up the wood chips and dump them in a heap here somewhere. I'm not sure where. Um, but until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.